I'm here at the Boy Scout cabin, and here in Gratz, Pennsylvania, it is south of the water tower on Short Mountain. Here in the 1920s, a group known as the Lone Scouts, which included Louis Narr, Harry Kissinger, Arlen Lebo, and Robert McNally, they formed to form the first scout group. They were given 15 acres of land, and they started to build a cabin with the help of Ray Snyder, and they thrived through the 1940s and 50s, but after that, they reached a decline, and which ultimately ended in the 1980s. From 1980 on, the scout cabin deteriorated to what it is today. Now the land is owned by the state, and it is gonna be made into a public recreational center. I'm here today with my grandfather, Charles Schaffstall, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his time as a scout in the 1940s. Well, what was a typical scout meeting like? Um, typical scout meeting, uh, usually there were 20 or more boys around my age. We would come down from the town here to the, to the cabin, and uh, up front, Usually we had a game going over here in the fields, over here. The fields were that it, uh, no trees right there. And we had a pretty good large size uh, baseball area to play baseball. Then from that, we would uh, be over here into the cabin. The main thing is uh, the food. We would bring what you call lard uh, to uh, fry. And we had a coal stove in here that would, burned wood and coal. We burned wood, plenty of wood. And uh, on the coal stove then, on these big frying pans we had, we would put the lard in there, and then we would put the hot dogs in there and get them toasty brown. And uh, so usually it was hot dogs uh, in the bun. Then uh, from that, as the evening went on, we would uh, go outside, build a fire, in these areas here and we would have marshmallows and we'd have a big fire going and so we'd all be around the fire uh, to uh, do that. Uh, some of the recreation we would do in the earlier in the day we would uh, the mountain is right behind us here uh, typical on all the trails you divide teams and you play a typical game called uh, uh, Yell if you're near, whistle if you're near, yell if you're far. And the, half the team would go up through the mountain and hide. But they would leave a trail for us. We had to be able to follow the trail, and what they did with the rocks, stones, and so forth, until you got, and you could hear them in there. But then you had to find them, because they would be in the leaves covered, or would be up the top of a tree or somewhere. And the, the object was to find the other team, and then the reversal. Uh, so it was a great place for uh, when I grew up to come down here, learn how all about the scout things, of how to tie a knot, um, first aid, swimming, and on and on. All of these things that a scout should learn. And uh, our main concentration wasn't on getting badges. We were more, we just had a lot of fun. We had a great leader called Twist Surfing. What other trips did you take, or what other activities did you do? Well, uh, every year we uh, went up uh, up towards Williamsport uh, area uh, for a week with our, our Scott leader, Twist Surfing. Uh, and we went up there at this lake, and uh, there we had pup tents to sleep in. And uh, we had access to the lake, uh, the Kurt Upty Grove, uh, who owned the lake from this area, allowed us to come up and use his boats up there. We could go uh, out there fishing, rowing, whatever. Uh, so we spent that area. Uh, one of the, other than all the scout activities uh, there involved, one of my favorite stories is uh, Right nearby there, there was a, a restaurant, and it also had like a, a bar area at this restaurant. 
And this one person would keep coming there at night uh, in his, uh, like a pickup truck. And uh, he'd go in there and he'd get drunk and he'd come out and drive. We noticed this. So one night it's drizzling. We went over and jacked up the truck and uh, high enough to get the wheels off the ground, the rear wheels. And then we waited for this guy to come out of the, the Western bar area. And he was, he drank too much. He came in and he gets in the car and next thing you know, the wheels are spinning, but he's not going anywhere. And he has a windshield wiper wiping away. And he's there for maybe five minutes. He stops the engine, gets out of the car and goes back into the restroom. Then we went over, jacked the car up, put the wheels back down on the ground and we waited, he didn't come and didn't come, and we went back to the pup tents. And the next day, the car was gone. So uh, we never know, we never knew the end result. So, but it was funny. <laughs> so, uh, but that was a great place up there for uh, year after year, we look forward to going and working on badges and what have you for the scouts. It was just a great, uh, we all look forward to that. What was your favorite story from being in Boy Scouts? Um, I remember we came down from uh, the town. We were coming down to the cabin. Nice warm evening. And uh, we stopped at the creek that is on the bottom of the mountain here. And we get into the creek. And I started walking around at the other end. And I stepped in a piece of glass. And uh, my toe was cut. And it was looked pretty bad. Uh, the rest of the guys come over. They put me on a stretcher and they carry me all the way up to the doctor in town, Doc Horn. And there I am. Uh, they put a tourniquet on my leg up along to stop the bleeding. And they took me into Doc Horn. And Doc Horn looks there and he says, Well, boys, that's a great job, but. You don't put a tourniquet on like that. <laughs> so we learned how to put a tourniquet on your uh, leg. And then the doc patched up my toe and the whole thing. And uh, no big problem. But uh, I did get a free ride all the way from the bottom of the mountain up to the doctor's office. And then no charge. He just, but the doc, I thought, was he had a really laughing. We boys coming up, we were a great boys' house. <laughs>